Hello again, welcome to Scott's Views. And I did a, a video a week ago or so about touching on the philosophy of uh, Ivan Kirievsky and his book I mentioned is Man in His Faith. And I've been, uh, I have been, I have read the book. It's only a short book. It's only about six, sixty odd pages. But uh, there were some very interesting parts in it, which uh, illuminated a lot of the ideas I've talked about in my channel, with regards the limits of rationalisation and intellectualisation, of getting, being more in touch with one's being, so to speak in the Heideggerian sense and obviously uh, a lot of the the limits of science and uh, touching on the more religious aspect of what I think I am aiming towards uh, not support not particularly intentionally but, th but that is the way uh, the, my line of thinking leads Inevitably, there's no real getting away from the fact that what I am talking about in many t in many points in my videos is the religious, and uh, <clears throat> it's I think it's uh, that is quite uh, significant. It's very significant, but uh, I came across in chapter five of this book by Kirievsky is uh, a little quote that I think I'll read out. Right, here goes. Uh, this is the, the author who's writing about his philosophy, of course. The author is uh, uh, Alexei Young, Hiram Moncandro is Young. So, he says, We have seen in Ivan Kirievsky's description of the symptoms of sickness in the West and his diagnosis of the cause of that illness. Now, proceeding to prescribe the cure, he considers those things which make a Western thinker differ from an orthodox thinker. He will steadily shift the reader's gaze towards the example of holy orthodoxy, at the same time showing the convert to orthodoxy the Western baggage of which he must rid himself. First of all, he begins, the orthodox thinker striving for truth is concerned with the correctness of his inward state. Western thinkers have been more concerned about the outward condition. Western thinkers suppose that it is possible to acquire complete truth by the means of the solitary independent powers of one's mind with one ability with one's ability, they grasp that which is moral, with the other they experience the aesthetic, the utilitarian, with another sense. Truth they understand by means of abstract reason, but not one of these faculties knows what the other is doing until it is, until its activity is completed. Generally, Western thinkers do not seek the centre of spiritual life. They do not understand that there must be a living union of the higher powers of the mind, for one does, does one part does not move without the cooperation of, of others. I mean, incredible when you read this. Uh, in regards to uh, the, the, the reference to Western thinkers, that is that is the, the the Eastern Orthodox Church is criticism of West in the rise of scholasticism and the Enlightenment and uh, powers of reason etc where the critique is that western christianity branched off uh, where it became more scholastic and just a a, a kind of exercise in lot in obeying the rules and that that was that uh, i mean and that criticism perhaps is 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 warranted in many aspects but in regard uh, because of course not all western christians fell for this you know you think of the 
the great uh, philosopher, religious philosopher Søren Kierkegaard, or I mean, I would say Pascal, the French uh, theologian, or Nicolas de Cusa. I mean, there, you know, there are there are aspects of reasoning and intellectual intellectualization, and I don't think that can be done away with. But they these thinkers do point to uh, what Kirievsky's getting at and what, and what the author's describing here, and uh, and also and also in the Scottish tradition, the Scottish Christian tradition, there is a wonderful book that I've just discovered that I've never ever heard of before. But it's called the Therapeutica Sacra, Sacred Therapeutics, as I think it might be translated from Latin. Uh, and essentially, uh, that was by an author called David Dickinson in the 1600s, he wrote it. And from my readings of Hesychasm in the Eastern Orthodox Church, this Therapeutica, if I've pronounced it properly, Sacra, uh, from a brief perusal of the of the of the book which I've ordered, and it's online, it it, it, uh, it hints very much at uh, this uh, the, the living union of the higher powers of the mind, where one part does not move without the cooperation of the other. Uh, so. There's another part to this, because in a lot of my videos I've discussed the mental healthism, the cultural hegemony of mental health, the pathologization of human uh, sufferings, in, 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 interpreted in a scientific way or a medical scientific scientific way. Uh, in other words, man is God, we have the science, we have the solutions, we can do with it. We feel suffering, we take a pill, uh, children have anxiety, there's methods to do it. Uh, you know, kind of divorced from all the stuff that I've been talking about, such tactics seem quite common sense and harmless. But of course, when it's divorced from history, when it's divorced from the roots and the richness of so much uh, work done, it's done in the, the Christian tradition, and I say that within the from from the Orthodox tradition of the early Church Fathers to the works of the in in the Scottish tradition of David Dickinson and the Therapeutica Sacra. Uh, if if we have a society an atheist secular godless society that people like Solzhenitsyn warned against was a bad idea and that people want to push this because they know you know if it's a battle between good and evil so to speak they'll know fine well that to separate us from a lot of the, these crucial, ancient, uh, sacred, uh, religious, spiritual truths based upon the Christian Bible, then, uh, then they've done their job well. And so, I'll just uh, read, this is not in one of the last chapters, what was it called? Chapter 7, chapter 7. He goes on here, the author. What could be more clear? If a man wishes to know what is good and true, that is, ultimately God himself, he must lead a good life free of sin. The more he struggles with himself, the more his reason ascends to greater and greater heights. The more he, cl he clearly he sees reality and truth, and the more brightly does his faith shine. The man who does not struggle with himself, keeps his reason chained at the lowest level and his faith and withers and dies. 
he becomes like those who refuse to love the truth that could save them. Uh, this thought was a quote from Two Thessalonians. Uh, and he goes on. Those who do not toil do not ascend, nor are their lives marked by the signs of a noble struggle. They settle for the peace which this world gives, which was not given by Christ, and they ask in amazement, why should I suffer? Why should I undergo mental, spiritual and bodily contest? In 19th century Russia, Bishop Ignati warned of this kind of self-satisfaction which comes from avoiding struggles. And another little bit before I make some comments. Every man on earth is sick with the fever of sin, with the blindness of sin, and is overcome with its fury. If you are spiritually sick, strike the malady, crucify it, do not in any way indulge it, do not cherish it, do not warm it, do the reverse of what it asks, we sin in thought, word and deed, in order to, be, to become pure images of the most holy trinity, we must strive that we be holy in thought, word and deed. So again, this idea of su human suffering in the psychological, psychiatric sense of uh, um, pathologizing human experience uh, and, and, and the cry from the, the bowels of the cultural hegemony of mental healthism, why do I suffer, take this away, the cry to the state the state or, or the doctor, the, the, the scientist of the state to take their suffering away. A cry for authority from a, the human, you know, appeal to the human to be the God. It's a limiting, it's a limiting uh, way to approach a human existence. Uh, an exploration or a reorientation towards being the kind of sub this is the subtitle of my channel and this quote uh, you know about, about the, the the more he struggles with himself the more reason ascends to the greater and greater heights the more clearly he sees reality truth and the more brightly does his faith shine now, when you think about that, how, how easy it is to go to a doctor to take to take a pill. There is no there is no staying with this the suffering of what is going on. Because of course the suffering could be pointing to something quite important, very important, like a signal to something greater and higher than just self-indulgence of pleasure of an, an anaesthetizing oneself to the reality of being alive in the world at the present time and uh, this sense of injustice the cry of the social justice warrior you know why am i suffering why am i undergoing mental spiritual and bodily contest you know, and the self-satisfaction of, you know, indulging in in uh, substances or activities to, to take it away, to boost one's ego, to indulge one's narcissism, to become God, so to speak, master of the human realm. And uh, this, this, uh, that short circuit that a mod postmodern scientific me me medical. Uh, thing does 
takes one away from the struggle. And so, the, 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 this idea is, you know, regarded as abhorrent in many regards. It's abhorrent to, a, to a, a, you know, a person who doesn't believe in 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 a in the spiritual or, or a god or anything like that. It's an abhorrent idea. You know, but look at look at what's happening in society at the moment. Can one ask the question: Is is a society where all, all this spiritual wisdom is 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 disregarded or forgotten about, or or just completely hidden from people? And is and is it leading to a a, a utopia? Think about what's happened now with the COVID nineteen situation how fearful people are of existing all these young people who are wearing a mask who are doing it out of conformity out of fear who are you know rushing to vaccine centers running almost to take a medicine to stop at a minuscule risk of uh, supposedly catching a disease, and and, and also it, because if it's it's an experimental drug, and and all and all the other things that goes along with it, the, the idea of the vaccine passports and the, the trial events that people are going to having to be sh shepherded like sheep into a pen to watch a music show. People are very willing to give everything up for what it is to be truly human. Very, very far from the ideas of Kirivieski and uh, David Dickinson. Food for thought. It certainly makes me think. It certainly makes me think. But I've probably left you with more questions and answers. So maybe it's a good thing. Anyways, till next time. Live not by lies.